Hi, yesterday we released Phaser CE, which stands for Phaser Community Edition, and I just wanted to take a few minutes to explain what this is and how you can get involved with it. If you visit the Phaser GitHub page, you'll see that the structure has significantly changed. Before you would have found grunt files and package definitions all in the root, but we've now split it away into three separate sections, just to cover them briefly. The v2 folder is where we have the final official release of Phaser 2.6.2. By official, I mean that it's the last version that we as a company worked on and maintained the development of. Inside the v3 folder, that's where you were developing Phaser 3. You're welcome to look inside and poke around and have a look at the source code and follow it if you wish, but it's not yet production ready. The most important new change is the v2 community folder. This is where the Phaser CE files live and if you want to take part in phase of community development, this is the directory that you should be looking at. If you go into the v2 community folder, you'll see that the structure closely resembles that of the previous phaser repository. You'll find the build scripts, the source code, the TypeScript definitions, and the documentation. The difference between the phaser community edition and any previous version that we've ever released is that we're no longer going to be the gatekeepers or the bottleneck really between the source code changes that you submit and the actual framework. Previously, we would have taken all pull requests and we would have looked at them and vetted them and checked them carefully to ensure that A, they followed the same vision that we had in mind for Phaser and that B, they didn't conflict or didn't add unnecessary features to the API. But we've now handed this over, so this is now a community decision. It's up to you guys to decide whether or not you think a feature is worthy for inclusion. It's also up to you to decide whether or not a bug should be fixed or if it's just the way things should work. With the CE edition, we're no longer going to be sitting on pull requests for weeks or even months before they get merged in. We will literally check that they're going into the right folder location and then merge them immediately. It's our hope that by doing this, will make development of Phase C as frictionless as possible. You no longer have to wait for us to consider it time to release a new version of Phaser. You can literally merge in the changes that you need as quickly as possible. To facilitate this, we've created a new package on NPM called Phaser CE. We've seeded this off with the 2.7.0 release, but we can push new versions up as quickly as you need and as often as you deem necessary. As with all new initiatives, it will probably take time for things to settle down and find their feet. We're hoping that we'll be able to identify some strong individuals that we can give permissions on the repository to merge pull requests and close issues directly, thus removing us from the loop entirely. One question we've been asked is why we decided to split our repository into three separate version folders rather than using you know, a more traditional method such as branching or separate repos per version. But the answer really is visibility. We believe that new developers seeing an open source project for the first time will almost instinctively look to see when was it last committed to, how many people are actively taking part in it, you know, when was the most recent commit date on it. And by changing the structure of our repository, you'll now see that all development takes place on the master branch. Previously, this was all done against a dev branch, and when we were ready to release a new version, we would then merge to master. So master was always, you know, several months perhaps behind the development version, which was a way of hiding the, you know, sheer amount of intense work that was going on. But by reducing everything down so everything now takes place on master, we're opening this back up again. We're making it clear that, yes, a lot of people are working on all versions of Phaser, other than the V2 one, obviously. And that taking part in Phaser CE is taking part in an active, live, breathing, working repository, and not just something that will be ignored or sat forgotten about for weeks. I've also lost count of the number of times where we had to close a really great pull request because it was against the master branch instead of dev. It was just another piece of friction that stood in the way of people helping contribute towards the project that thankfully it's great to have finally removed. Phaser 2 was a really significant version for us. We spent an awful lot of time working on it and building in all the features that we wanted and just making it as good as we could. Uh, it represents many, many, many days and weeks and months of hard work and effort. And so, as you can appreciate, I, I kind of am feeling slightly hesitant at the thought of just handing it over and letting everyone do whatever they want with it. I guess in a sense you've always been able to do that in one way or another because you could just fork the repository, change it to your heart's content and use it in that way. 
But now we're actively allowing you to contribute back into the main Phaser C version, the version that would be heavily promoted on the website and on the Git repository. So it is with a little trepidation that I kind of enter into this new CE realm. But it's a really important thing. We have to actually do it. We need to focus our efforts on Phaser 3 development and we need to not make the development of Phaser 3 block or hold anything else that could be taking place with Phaser 2. So by doing this, we are literally handing the control over to you. You are able to implement fixes and features and new t things and basically change the API as you see fit. Change the tooling process behind it. It uses a very archaic grunt concatenation process, for example. So anything that you see in there that you think, oh, well, this could really be done better, you're able to now do that. Make those changes and make it better for the benefit of the wider community. Hopefully we'll see you know new versions come out of it quite quickly. We will promote them on the Phaser site. We'll mention them in the newsletter. We'll talk about them and basically actively help with the promotion of them as much as we can. Um, and in the meantime, we will carry on with Phaser 3 development, of course. If you have any questions about Phaser Community Edition, how to build it, how to get involved with it, then have a look at the README first of all, uh, but beyond that, get involved in the Slack or the Discord channels and just chat to the devs in there. Um, lots of them are already involved in the CE version, they'll be able to help you out, especially with building it. If you do add new features, try and keep the wider community in your mind rather than just adding a feature that you specifically need for your game. If it's something that really will benefit everyone, then, you know, put it in there. Um, and also when it comes to changing things that already exist, consider very carefully about how that change might impact other people that are already using that version of Phaser. But on the whole, have fun. Phaser has always been great fun for us to work on. It's a quite easy, quite flexible API to navigate and to get around. Um, and we believe that we've always sort of maintained a decent level of documentation. And we've always kind of managed to record in our change logs everything that's been going on, you know, right down to the nth degree and attribute those changes to the relevant people that helped make them happen. So please try and keep all of this in mind when working on the CE version. If you make a change, add it into the change log so people know that you've done it and that you're responsible for it. Um, if you want something added in there but you're not quite at the level where you can do it yourself, then post up a feature request onto GitHub and see if there's someone else who can help contribute towards it. But you know, like I said, have fun. It is a fun project to work on once you get over the initial installation and build process. And you know you can really make some significant changes to game developers' lives just with some very small, simple little tweaks to the API. So get in there, get involved, and let us know what you make.